Hey everyone, Chuck with Functional Fly, and uh, tonight we're going to go ahead and do something a little different. We've been doing all trout patterns up till this point, but i uh, like to branch out a little bit and do a hair wing salmon pattern. Uh, this is a Silver Doctor, uh, kind of a, a hair wing version on a, uh, on a classic salmon fly. A lot of fun. If you've never tied salmon flies before, I'd encourage you to give it a shot at least once. Uh, lots of steps. Uh, lots of specific proportions uh, when you're tying these flies, but uh, the discipline that it teaches you with regard to that proportion and thread control and everything really can uh, can improve uh, your tying overall. So let's go ahead and dive in and tie up a Silver Doctor. In the vise, I have a partridge Q code, which is a low water double hook. And as usual, when tying on double hooks, you mount the rear hook into the vise. That lets you see where the uh, the hook point and the barb are. Just makes tying uh, easier overall. I'm going to go ahead and give a fair amount of room up at the eye of the hook for my tie-in point. I don't want to crowd that eye later on. So this just gives me a, a good reminder of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie in and trim away that excess. And I'm using fairly open wraps. There's, uh, there's no need on a fishing fly like this to be super particular in terms of having perfect touching turns. Um, but uh, but you will want to uh, will want to fix that up here as we as we go along. The tip on this is a fine oval silver tinsel, and when I tie this in, I'm gonna strip away the silver on the last little bit so that I can actually tie in on that cloth core because it's a more secure. Tying in, tying in material than, uh, than the silver itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and now I'll make some touching turns coming back to just behind the hook point. And then I'm going to take just a couple of open turns just to move the, the thread itself out of the way. Now normally on a single hook when you wrap this in you would go ahead and wrap the turns forward. Here on a double hook what we're going to do is I'm going to wrap these turns back towards the hook bend and on the third turn I'm going to go ahead and when I come around the bottom I'm going to bring it up between the turns of tinsel and bring it up and over the top now we'll back those turns of thread off so that I can bind this in and I will secure that right on top of the hook and I'm going to leave a little bit of that material on there so that I have an even amount of material as I come up and tie in the tag and even into the butt. And again, now I'm going to come in with touching turns because my tag is going to be floss and we want to have a nice smooth base for that. for the floss. This is just a single strand out of four strand rayon floss. And I'm going to tie that in underneath. On salmon flies I like to be in the habit of tying everything in on the bottom. Just something that I learned over the years. And you're going to want to make sure that you always maintain 
good steady pressure on that floss and you'll see that that floss is starting to flatten out just a little bit and that's what you're looking for you want it to lay nice and flat if it starts to stray a little too far you can just twist it a little bit with your fingers and then relax it if it goes too far back in the opposite direction And that first layer going back is just to continue to lay down a nice smooth platform so that then when you come forward with the top layer you get a very smooth look. Once we have that done, now I'll come in and trim away the waste pieces and that is done. Take one more turn, get rid of any, uh, any excess. The tail for a Silver Doctor is a golden pheasant crest. And on the hair wings, I like these to lay relatively low. Uh, I'd, I'm not looking for something that's really curled up uh, too heavily. So I'm going to tie this in right in on the center rotate that vise towards me so I can see where it's aligning and again if you're tying for presentation there's more preparation work that you would do to uh, to make that sit just perfectly but from a fishing perspective all you're looking for is that uh, that little flash of, of gold I like the length of the tail to be slightly longer than the gap of the hook and just extending slightly beyond the end of the, uh, the hook bend. And now I'm going to start to get a little bit more particular because we're going to be doing a tinsel body on this and tinsel like floss will uh, will show flaws very very easily so we want to go ahead and start to build a nice smooth body as we work Just make sure that we don't have any huge bumps or ridges to overcome when we when we wrap that tinsel. All right, next step is the butt, and the butt is red wool, and I have just taken some red yarn and pinched away uh, strips of that, and then just kind of blended it back in together. So, as you dub this onto the thread, as with any dubbing, start sparse. Don't try to load up too much material on there all at once. If you, uh, if you like to use a wax, feel free. I prefer to not use it. What I'm going to do is I'll lay a couple of turns down and come back up over the top. And now you've got just a, a nice bump there for the butt. The next step is the rib. And the rib is a medium oval silver. And the size on these will vary depending on what size you're uh, you're tying these. I'm tying this on a size four, so a medium is uh, is certainly appropriate. If you're going to tie these down 
on a size 10 or, or 12, then uh, you'd probably stay with a, a fine uh, tinsel. And again, we're going to tie this in at the core, but I want to make sure that we're preparing a smooth underbody for that tinsel to come over the top. So I'm tying this in underneath, two to three turns to hold it in place. And I'm just going to take that tinsel and set it out of the way. Because we're going to follow that up with our actual body material. And this is a silver tinsel. Now this is a mylar tinsel and it's actually two-sided. The other, the reverse side is gold. Um, so to tie this in, uh, the way you want to tie it in is if the silver is the color that you want to show, then after I cut that to a point, I'm going to tie it in on the underside of the hook, but I'm going to tie it in so that the silver is up against the hook itself. I'm going to tie this in on the back side. Just take a sort of a looser corralling wrap to, to lock that in. Drop back just a little bit. Now go ahead and bind that down and wind forward. Now come forward with touching turns. You may need to stop periodically just to uh, keep that core from the oval tinsel in place. because that's going to want to roll on you. And if you see your thread starting to uh, get too twisted up, you could just give it a slight twist counterclockwise and flatten that out and that'll help you keep a, a smoother body as you're coming forward. This is for a fishing fly as opposed to something you're going to mount on a wall. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you do want to start to get those, uh, get the principles down because it will improve your, uh, your tying overall. Now, if you want to make the, uh, if you want to make your fly durable, little trick is after you've gotten that body laid down, just take a little bit of a thicker head cement, just run a light bead right across the top. So that then, as we wrap this tinsel, and you can see by cutting that taper in, now we're going to be able to wind forward with touching turns or, or very slight overlap, but it builds that that forward uh, taper coming in. And now as you wrap this through that cement that you just laid down, that comes in contact and that's gonna create a much more durable fly so that when the fish bites, should it go ahead and bite down into the uh, Oh, that slipped on me just a little bit. If it does bite down into the tinsel, uh, the tinsel's not going to unravel on you. And I'm going to bring this forward. And I'm going to stop a good three to four millimeters behind the hook eye. One more turn to secure it. 
next step is to take that oval silver and tradition kind of dictates on the salmon flies that you use five turns of tinsel going forward so you want to kind of eyeball that as you are preparing to go forward there's three four and five And again, notice I'm tying everything in and tying it off on the underside of the hook. Then when I want to trim it away, I just rotate the hook so that the thread is now hanging down and there's never a chance that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to cut that thread as I'm, as I'm tying that in. All right, the body is now done. And notice I, I tied that in with yellow thread uh, simply because when you are tying in uh, lighter colors like the, the yellow floss, etc., um, the yellow uh, creates a nice base for that. But now I'm going to go ahead and finish the remainder of the fly in a red thread. So I'll just take a couple of turns, tie that in. And as I'm tying it in, I'll just come right in behind... the yellow thread and trim all the all of that away together come in underneath the last bit saves me from building up any uh, unwanted bulk when I'm doing uh, an unnecessary whip finish all right, the wing is, we're going to have an underwing of just a few strands of golden pheasant tippet. And when I say just a few, I'm, I'm talking just a very few. And we want that tippet to just lay in strands. Now, see how that's kind of sticking up? So what I can do is if I put my thumb on top of the tippet and then I push forward, it kind of puts a, a little bit of a kink right behind the uh, right behind the head area. May need to crank down on your thread pressure just a little bit to make sure that's holding. But now that material lays down a little bit better. And that's all you're looking for. It's just a, a slight impression. And if it doesn't lay down perfectly, don't worry about it because we've got a lot more material that is going to be, uh, that's going to be coming in. So the wing itself, the main wing is three different levels and I'm using foxtail fur. So it's red followed by blue, followed by yellow. So I've cut a, a good size clump of foxtail hair. I'm not going to use all of the red under fur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the longer guard hairs because this is the stuff that I want. And I'm going to pull that under fur away. And then I'm going to take a look. And I want these fibers to be approximately the same length, but I'm not going to stack it. I don't want it to have that paintbrush type of look. And I also don't want it to be too full. These really strong colors will go a long way. So I want it to fit sort of up along the curve of the tail. So I have that set where I want the length to be. I'm going to measure that off to where my tying thread is. And I'm going to trim away the excess. And 
And then, as I tie this in, I'm going to take just a, the slightest brush of cement. And then as I tie it in, I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put the wing material in place, draw that thread forward, then push it back slightly about halfway up into the material, and then come over the top. And what that does is it just gives you a little bit more secure binding down of the material. And you can see that that's laying in there nicely. And notice how that it's also taken that underwing and uh, gotten that to lay down in place. Now I'm going to take a look at the top of this to see how well it's centered. And if it's perfect, then great. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and I just took my thumbnail and just pressed and rubbed back and forth on that slightly just to flatten that out ever so gently. And then I'm going to repeat the process with some fox fur that is dyed silver doctor blue I've got way too much there so I'll grab some of this again strip away the under fur get to the material that I want measure it to length. So this is going to be just a shade longer than the red. Trim it. Come in. Get about half on the first turn. And you'll notice with each successive piece of material that I'm coming on, I'm coming, I'm bringing it forward about one turn of thread. I'm going to flatten that out one more time. And then finally, the third color, which is yellow. This has got a little more curve to it, so I'm going to have to be a little careful in terms of how I handle this. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and steam this out. But we're going to be working with a length that's going to be short enough where we can actually make that curve kind of work for us to, uh, to form an upper perimeter on this wing. Measure that, slightly longer than the blue, trim it, just touch the brush to it with a little bit of cement, And there you go. So you can you can see all three layers. And then the final piece that you use as a roof is this is a little bit of black squirrel. Now the black, because it's a very strong color, you don't need much of this at all. And it should also not run back the full length. You want it to run about two-thirds the length. So um, I'm going to measure that off and trim it to length. Quick touch of cement.
and on this one you really don't need to uh, to insert the thread at the halfway point because you're you're putting a much smaller amount of material on there finally go up on top hit it with the thumbnail if you need to and then I'm going to come forward and make sure there's a little bit of a taper there as we finish the head but we have one more material to tie in and that is the collar so I've taken a hen feather that has been dyed silver doctor blue and I've folded the hackle on this I'm going to tie it in at the tip roll that to the underside and then fold that hackle tip back onto itself so that it doesn't want to pull as we start to wrap it there's very little there we probably wouldn't even have to trim that but I'll do it anyway and make sure that the thread is brought back to as far back as you want that uh, the overall uh, collar to start and then Gently stroking those fibers. Now I'm going to begin to wrap forward. And you'll notice that that collar is now coming up and hiding. A lot of that bulk in the head and this is why we started farther back so that now what you get is when you tie this off you have a much more diminutive head so we're gonna just kind of take a look make sure we like the flow of that down any loose turn any uh, loose bits and we have a nice shaped head with a collar that flows nicely over the multicolored body last step is to come in with a whip finish and we'll do two trim away the thread and then come in with your lacquer and you'll want to do two to three coats of the lacquer depending on the, uh, the thickness of the lacquer that you're using and there you have it there's your silver doctor Notice also that we've left a little bit of room behind the, uh, the thread head for a turtle knot onto the bear shank if, uh, for those who prefer that when they're tying on their salmon flies.
So there's the Silver Doctor. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll go give one a try. And if there are other patterns that you'd like to see me tie for you, please leave a message on the uh, on this post. And, uh, and thanks for watching.